the Olympic Games. Events steeped in history and tradition. But where did it all begin? What countries and situations have these sports been founded in? Did they even start as sports at all? Let us travel back to ancient Greece when javelin was thrown with a darker purpose in mind. The javelin's creation was not for sport, but as a weapon of war. A very effective weapon in close combat when used with a shield, but even more so when thrown from great distances to break enemy lines. Soon people wanted to prove they could throw the furthest and still be around to tell the tale, so the ancient Olympic Games soon became host to the javelin throw. Elsewhere on the battlefields of feudal Japan, the samurai developed an effective martial art they called Jujitsu. With its devastating locks and throws, it demanded a lifetime of devotion to master, a life greatly shortened if on the receiving end. Hundreds of years later when the samurai class were abolished, these skills did not disappear. They were reborn into a competitive sport named judo, the gentle way. On the other side of the world, in Europe, a western fighting art of fencing was commonplace. This soon developed into schools with treaties written down to instruct on their own rules of swordplay. Later, it became used by nobility to duel according to their code of chivalry. Over time, this too turned into a sport, and the only thing hurt now would be your pride. These unique martial arts are all seen in the Olympic Games today. People of all shapes and sizes can now compete in safety. Javelins have been redesigned purely for distance. Rawls and matting now protect judo players. And uniforms with electronic scoring systems decide who wins in fencing. Though much has changed over the years, the heart of each sport remains the same as it always has through its journey from warfare to fair play.